You know what is scarier than a zero day in Windows? A zero day in the system that patches Windows. Yeah, I'm talking about Microsoft WSUS, which is the Windows Server Update Services, and the newly discovered vulnerability, which is a remote code execution bug that is currently being exploited in the wild. If that sounds bad, buckle up because in this video we are diving deep into how this flaw works, why it is so dangerous, how hackers are exploiting it right now, and what you can do to protect your network before it is too late. Alright, so first, let's get everyone on the same page here. So WSCOS, it is short for Windows Server Update Services, which is basically Microsoft's in-house update distributor. Instead of every computer in a company connecting directly to Microsoft's update servers, they all talk to a central WSUS server. That server downloads patches once, stores them, and then pushes them out to the rest of your network. It's efficient, it saves bandwidth, but it also makes WSUS a central point of trust. And as, a, and as every security professional knows, when you compromise the system that distributes the patches and updates, you do not just hack my computer, you are actually hacking the entire enterprise. Now let's talk impact of this CVE. What exactly happened? Around mid-October last month, 2025, researchers and Microsoft disclosed a critical remote code execution flaw in the Windows uh, Update or Windows Server Update services. The problem here is it did not require authentication for the exploitation to work. Anyone, exactly yes, anyone, even someone completely outside your organization could send a specially crafted web request to your uh, WSUS server and potentially get system level access. Let me say that again, you do not, or hackers do not need credentials, no multi-factor authentication, no domain access. They just need an open WSUS port, meaning they need an open Windows Server update servers exposed to the internet. Once inside, hackers can drop malware, they can pivot across the network, or maybe worst case scenarios, they can push malicious updates that get installed on every connected Windows machine. So basically you walk you wake up one morning and your patching infrastructure is distributing ransomware instead of security updates. That's the impact. And that's why this vulnerability made so much noise, because it is striking the heart of the enterprise trust. Let's unpack the technical side. Don't worry, I'll keep it simple, but I'm going to have to be accurate at the same time. The vulnerability lives in how the Windows Server Update Services handles something called the authorization cookie. Normally, this cookie is a small encrypted blob that the server uses to verify who you are. But in affected uh, WSUS instances or builds, the server decrypts that cookie and then deserializes it using an unsafe method. So this means, or what does that mean? It means that think of deserialization like opening a box. It's supposed to contain safe objects. However, if an attacker or a hacker, the same, right, sneaks in a malicious um, gadget, maybe, when you open the box, it executes code. That's exactly what happens here. The hacker crafts a malicious authorization cookie, encrypts it properly, and sends it to the WSUS web endpoint, usually on port uh, 8530 or sometimes 8531. And here, the Windows Server Update Services decrypts it, sees a fake object chain, and unknowingly runs the hacker code as system, which is the highest privilege level of Windows, as all of you know. So with just one HTTP POST request, the hacker gains complete control of the uh, Windows or the WSUS host, which is a classic unsafe .NET deserialization. You might be asking, where is the exploit of this vulnerability? Well, basically, there are GitHub repositories uh, showing code snippets of the exploit, and unfortunately, hackers wasted zero time weaponizing this. Some hacks or attacks dropped partial payloads, which they are often, as you know, base64 encoded, and reached out to download second stage malware like the Skull ID info, st info stealer, which I haven't covered. I'm going to be, I'm going to cover on the, my next channel, which is the Gossip Hacker. You may feel, feel, feel free to sub subscribe there if you want to learn about the uh, biggest hacking groups online. Okay, let's get back to it. In other cases, threat actors, you know, used the WSUS as an initial access vector. They would pop the WSUS box, dump credentials, and then move laterally into domain controllers. Microsoft released an emergency out-of-band patch around October 23rd, and the US CISA added this vulnerability as usual, to their known exploited vulnerabilities catalog almost immediately. If your WSUS is still exposed to the internet or has not been patched, you're still sitting or you're still a sitting duck. And which moves me now to detection and mitigation. First step is to patch immediately. Microsoft's out of band update includes the usual update and several others depending on your Windows Server version. Check Microsoft's update guide and install the right one. Step two, if you cannot patch right away, you may have to isolate 
the Windows Server Update Service. It can block inbound access to ports 8530 and 8531 from any untrusted network. In other words, no internet exposure to WSUS, period. Step three now, hunt for signs of compromise or indicators of compromise. Check your IIS logs for large or strange authorization cookie values. These are the malicious payloads you should be looking for. You can also look for W3WP uh, executable or the service executable of the WSUS spawning partial or CMT. This is unusual usually. And also scan for scheduled tasks or services that were created by those processes. Hackers love to use them for persistence. And of course, do not forget to monitor outbound connections from WSUS to weird IPs or non domains, unknown domains, sorry. That's often your first sign something is wrong. And finally, my final word here is if you find something or anything suspicious, treat that server as fully compromised. You gotta have to take it offline, image it, rebuild it from a clean source, and rotate any credentials it had access to. You should remember that this server likely touches every Windows endpoint in your network. You cannot take chances here. And if you want to check out full detection and mitigation list, you can take a look at my blog where I put every Sigma rule, every error rule, every Splunk query you can take advantage of to run detection and mitigation on your network. And let me know in the comments how does your organization handle batch management or how your organization has handled this incident. Until next time, thank you for watching.